This is the long-awaited Zeppon Pons PT motorized pan and tilt heads sitting on top of one of my favorite sliders ever, the Zeppon Micro 2. This review is going to be a bit on the long side, but I'll provide chapters so you can skip around if you need to. But this review needs to be a bit longer because answering the question of is it any good is simply not a quick answer. It's important to note that Zeppon did not send me this to review. This is something I paid for out of my own pocket. It's something to keep in mind when I give you my final thoughts on this whole setup. So in the box, you're going to get four parts here. The pan head, the tilt head, the connector arm, and a mounting plate. And assembly is fairly straightforward. Let's go ahead and grab the slider. So the first thing you want to do is to put on your mounting plate. This is going to provide a more stable surface than if you just mounted it directly to the slider. Now I'm going to put on the pan head. Now we'll put on the mounting arm. And now the tilt head. And that's it. It is together. Now in the kit, you're going to get a small mounting plate for your camera as well. It's just a standard quarter 20 mount. The plate here on the tilt arm is actually magnetic. So once you slide your camera in, the plate will actually catch hold of it. Center that as much as you can, tighten it down. All right, we're good. Now I do wanna mention you are going to need separate batteries for both your slider, your pan head and your tilt head. They're all the NPF batteries. On the tilt head, and on the pan head. So you can see actually the setup time is pretty quick. Now, each one of these heads does have its own controls just like on the slider that you could use to control to set your sort of in and out points, but you would be starting them all at different times and nothing would sync up very well. So really you want to use the new app from Zeppon. Now you wanna make sure you're using Zeppon's latest app they released I think it was a couple of weeks ago. Fire it up. You get this tips message, click OK. If you have everything turned on, the slider and the two heads, it should detect those automatically. So just click done, and here we are. One of the things I noticed straight away was that you can have multiple waypoints, A, B, C, D, E, and F. You have a speed control under that, then under that, you have your actual controls. You can move the slider each direction with this one. And then of course your tilt controls and your pan controls. Now you can move the slider and either pan or tilt at the same time if you want to. What you cannot do is pan and tilt at the same time. It's just gonna go one way or the other. So let's just set up a basic AB point right now. We'll move the slider all the way to this side first. And let's spin the camera around. And that's about as fast as you can move everything with the joysticks here. So anyways, let's move all the way over to this side. We will pan towards the middle with it pointing down, set the A point, and we'll move over to the other direction. And we'll just stop there. And now we will pan over in this direction and let's point it up as well. And that will be our B point. You wanna set the speed to whatever you want here. I'm just gonna stick with 50% right now. Now, at the bottom here, you have an option if you want this to loop. And of course, the play button will start the move. That button will switch over to the different modes. 
So for now, we'll just do one movement, no looping. So we'll hit play. And now she's moving. Now there are definitely some quirks to this app, which I hope Zeppon is able to tidy up. And here's the first quirk. Since we chose not to loop, you would think if I just hit play again, it would just do that same basic movement, but in reverse. What it actually does, if I press play now, it actually quickly moves back to my original A point. Nothing's in sync here and it's moving much faster than it's supposed to. Now that's it back at its A point, now it's going to go back and move slowly at 50% speed over to the B point. Now, what I can do is stop it, click the loop button, hit play. Now it's going to quickly go back to its A point. Now it's moving at 50% speed to the B point, and we should see it move at the same speed, but in a loop. And there it goes. And it will keep looping for as long as I want it to. But for now, let's go ahead and hit stop. Here's another little quirk. What if I didn't like that speed after programming all that in? Well, unfortunately, you cannot. The speed is now locked. What you would have to do is go back to the main screen, click done again to get back in, and then you can adjust your speed. We'll take it up to 75%. Hit play. It's going to reset itself over to the A point. And now we're moving at 75% speed. Thankfully, I didn't have to redo my waypoints though. It kept those settings from where I had it previously. Now let's say we wanted to add a waypoint, a third waypoint. Once you have set your A and B waypoints and clicked play, you cannot then add additional waypoints. You will have to hit the reset button there in the top right corner and start over again. So you have to set all of the waypoints that you want initially at first. That will be our A point. Move to the middle. And let's say we're going to point the camera down a little bit. That will be our B point. We'll move the slider a little bit more. And let's pan this way a little bit and go down a little bit more. That will be our C point. We'll move back over to here. And maybe the camera goes back up. Obviously these are sort of insane moves that you would never actually use, but I just want to be able to demonstrate all the different waypoints. And now we've set D. And let's set the speed to 50% and hit the loop button, because this time I want to move back and forth between all those waypoints. Hit play. As you can see, it's moving through those waypoints. Now you're going to see that there's a slight pause between waypoints. I've talked to Zeppon about this and they said they're working to try and correct that so that pause won't be there anymore. But there's a bigger issue. This is my biggest issue with the Pons PT right now. So what I've set up here is just a simple A, B waypoint. We're going the full length of the slider and there is a slight pan and tilt in this shot as well. We're going to be running at 50% speed, and when we hit the transition, you should see the problem that I'm talking about. So I'm going to hit play, and it's resetting back to the A point. Now we're running at 50% speed. Now I do want to note that between the waypoints, the movement is very, very smooth. I've got this sitting on top of a little carbon fiber tripod. I do have some sandbags helping to weigh down the tripod a little bit. 
just to provide a little bit more stability. So you can see the movement is nice and smooth. I'm using the Sony a7C, a fairly lightweight camera in a cage, and the Tamron 28 to 75, which is a bit on the heavy side. Now, of course, there's a slight pause. Now, when we get to the next waypoint, we'll see if the uh, um, sync issues, I guess I would call them, between the slide or the pan and the tilt crops up on us. So let's see what happens when we get to that transition point. Almost there. Just a slight hiccup. Okay, I've set up a new movement. Again, we're going the full length of the slider, just two waypoints, but we're gonna go at 100% speed. And I think you will see the problem with the waypoint transition here. Again, this is kind of worst case scenario for this slider, if you're moving it at 100%. And... There, you can see that it kind of, the slider stopped, but the tilt kind of kept going. And you'll see that here again, the next transition. See, not quite perfectly in sync. Now what I've done here is set up a much wider shot with much more pan and much more tilt than the previous movements. And again, we're at 24. 5% and we'll see how everything looks. Give you an idea of how this transition is really going to look. There was a little bit of out of sync movement, but it wasn't too bad. I mean, you'll have to judge for yourself if that's something you could live with. For example, if you were using this kind of setup with an interview and you were actually uh, filming those transitions and you were including that in your final piece, you'll you know, decide for yourself whether or not that was uh, acceptable. Now, again, even at 25% using that in an interview kind of situation, that might be a touch on the fast side. What I can tell you is that the slower you uh, set the system to, the less of that out of sync movement you see. It just seems to handle it a little bit better. So the faster you go, the more exaggerated the problem becomes. So if you stay at a slow speed, you know, again, decide for yourself whether or not that is uh, acceptable for you. You can mount the camera sideways on the system. Like if you wanna try out one of those inception shots, which we're gonna do here in a sec. Just make sure you raise up the camera enough so that this bottom plate doesn't bump into the motor. Of course, if you've got a flip out screen, be careful with where you position that as well.
I hope all of these tests provide you with enough information to decide for yourself if the Pons PT is for you. I did want to mention that there doesn't appear to be any bundle deals of the Pons PT and the Micro 2 slider at this time. I already had the Micro 2 slider, so I just had to purchase the Pons PT itself, which was $600, I believe, at the time of this review. So with that being said, is the Pons PT for me? Am I going to keep it? I am. Does it have flaws? Yes, it does. So then why am I going to keep it? I shoot a lot of product videos, and with product videos, the issues that the system currently has with waypoint transitions doesn't really impact me. I don't actually shoot the transitions of different directions. I've been talking a lot with the folks over at Zeppon since I received this unit, and they've told me that they know about these issues and are actively trying to address them. And in my opinion, these issues do seem like they could be solved with the firmware update. It certainly doesn't seem like the issues are from design flaws. And I remember back in the early days of the Micro 2 slider and some of the issues it had when it first came out. And indeed, they did release a firmware or two that addressed those issues. I'm betting on Zeppon doing the same thing with the Pons PT. Now, I'm not trying to make excuses here for anyone, but I imagine trying to integrate a brand new pan and tilt system with a, what, two-year-old slider probably isn't the easiest thing in the world to do. Again, keep in mind, I pay for this thing out of my own pocket. So right now, for the money I spent, the system works for me and the way that I shoot. If they can perfect the waypoint transitions, then that's a bonus for me. My alternative was to look into something like the Rhino 2 at 2300 bucks or so, or the Syrup Genie 2 at close to three grand. Right now, I feel like I'm getting my $600 of value out of the Pons PT as it stands right now. So I hope I was able to provide you with enough information to decide for yourself if the Pons PT is worth your money. And if you do decide to pick this up, I'd really love to hear from you in the comments and what your experience has been with it. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a good one.